Oh, shit, is this thing recording? I see. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you guys about why you should not buy an F-150. Or rather, why I did not buy the F-150. Okay, so let's get right into it. First off, what about Chevy? Fuck Chevy. They just took a $50 billion bailout and laid off 15% of their workforce, what, like... A couple weeks, or a, like 10 years later, 8 years later. Here's one to you, Chevy. Fuck you, Chevy. So don't get a Silverado. Okay? F-150. That's a half-ton class truck. Okay? Half-ton class. What else is in that class? You've got Toyota uh, Tacomas or some shit. Nissan Ultimas or whatever. I don't know. I didn't look at Toyota or Nissan. I looked at Dodge and Ford. And I'm not going to bash Toyota or Nissan, therefore. They might be good, but for my towing capacities, I actually didn't even look into them. Okay? So, I was actually just looking at Ford and Dodge. So, this one's basically just going to be a comparison between Ford and Dodge. And first off, should you get a regular cab, an extended cab, or a crew cab? Because if you're going to get the crew cab, this video doesn't really apply to you. And if you get the regular cab, the video doesn't apply to you. But I'm here to say that both of those cabs are complete bullshit unless you're an actual construction worker who every single day this truck is used for construction. Like, and you're hauling around 8 by 4 pieces of plywood or drywall and you need that extended truck bed. Because, you know, an extended cab with an extended bed of 8 feet is unmanageable on the road. It's pretty hard to control. But, um, the crew cab, I think, is just gaudy, and, uh, I mean, I don't think, I mean, if you're a construction worker with a crew, then maybe you should get it, but, you know, for my purposes, I think that's just a minivan with a damn truck bed instead of a trunk, and I think that the crew cab is kind of stupid, because I think it looks like shit. So, considering that, because I was only looking at extended cabs with the back door seating or the back end seating, but with uh, not the full size back end seating, just the extended seating, but not the full size back seating. That's all I wanted. I looked at the Fords, and lo and behold, it didn't actually have a door handle that you could access when the front door was shut. You had to open the front door in order to access the door handle on the little hitch door. This is 2019 models I'm looking at. 2019, 2018. And the door handle to get out of the vehicle or into the vehicle, you have to open the front door first. Now, there are multiple problems with that. First off, there's no supporting member there. In case you get in a crash, it's not going to be as... Uh, trustworthy as if there was an actual supporting piece of metal there where you would have a hinged door and the regular door was shut like any other vehicle. If you look, there's actually a big old metal pillar there and that will actually help you more in a crash than if the two doors just like bifold, you know, if they like bifold. <laughs> so, yeah, um... That's the first problem with that is that it, it first off it might look better, okay? The bifolding uh no door on the outside extended cab actually looks better. The F150 without the two door handles per side on the outside looks better. But if you're ever in a car crash, the problem with that, the second problem with that is that you can't get out. If the front guy's dead and the car's burning, you cannot get out. You have to somehow open that front door and then open the back door. How the fuck are you going to do that if your car is in a lake and it's actively sinking? You'd have to break the window somehow. What the fuck? What the fuck? I would never buy the F-150. 
Fuck that shit. Get the fuck out of here, dog. I jeez. I she thought that I was scared. She thought that I was pissed off. She's like, look, I still love you. I still love you. I'm not Ford. I still love you. Yeah, she's not Ford. She's not Ford. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Ah, oh, come on up here. Leon, come on. Alright, come on. Okay, you can you can finish the video with me, alright? Oh, good girl. Alright, so. To finish what I was saying, the, uh, why the fuck would you buy a truck in 2019 that you can't even get out of the back seat in case of a crash? Like, are they fucking stupid? Jesus, that's not acceptable. I swear. Ugh. So anyway... Like I say, the other problem with that is, what if your fingers, what if you're in the back seat and the guy in, okay, I'll act normal. I get, oh, sorry, Duke, he was sitting under there and he got squished. Sorry, Duke. Oh, jeez, jeez, jeez. No, Leon, go lay down. Both of you guys, go lay down. Okay, so, the other problem with that is, if you are in the back seat and it's not in a crash, you're just trying to get out... And the guy in front of you forgets, and you're just like thinking, hey, I'm a smart guy. I'm just going to open the door myself, right? And then he shuts the door. Guess what happens to your fingers? They get squanched. Now, I don't think that's an acceptable design. It might look better from the outside, but, and I was actually thinking it was a better design until I actually started to analyze it. It's so stupid in 2019 to not just give you a little pillar with a door hinge on the pillar that opens up like a regular sedan or crew cab. It's just a crew cab, but not all the way extended. It's just an extended cab. Why do they need the damn crew cab to have an external door handle and to actually be safe? This shouldn't even be legal by Ford, okay? It shouldn't even be legal. I would never buy a Ford F-150 because of this problem alone. Oh, the dog thinks I'm scared. Oh, he thinks I'm scared. Huh. I'm scared of everyone who buys an F-150 extended cab. Hmm.